I can't help but feel like my concussion, like it, um, like even if it kills me, whatever happened, like I don't think it will, but even if it does, like uh, I, on the human level, I always feel like it's anything that's happening is moving us further and further to that freedom. And for me, like what my concussion has done is it's highlighted the areas in which I was already um, struggling with to maintain from my awakening. Like, so it was the areas in which after that awakening happened that I found difficult to maintain. And um, it's kind of like highlighted those areas and I just can't really do them at the moment. They're not all areas, like it changes. And so it's really like, um, just like, even though I, in the long run have to do, you know, like my tax returns and refunds and all these things, and I am trying to keep up with it because I have to refund a lot of people at the moment. It's like highlighting what didn't feel natural to me before already. And it's actually so wonderful to just be like, ah, fuck it, let's not do it. (laughs) I mean, I can't really. Like whatever comes to you isn't a gift because that is a story. So like whatever happens is a gift. That isn't quite the right story. It's just you can't ever grab the right story of what's happening. But it's it's like everything is leading us home because it's the only place to go. And the more that the human gets in line with that story or that that feeling or that flow, the easier it is for the human. Like this is all a return journey. There's nowhere else you can go. Where else do you think you're going to go? And the mind fears that it's going to fall out of this in some way. It's going to fall out of itself. But you can't fall out of yourself. You are yourself. You are that which is watching. I'm not talking about the personal self. And I know language is so freaking confusing. I'm talking about... um, that which is beyond the idea of you, the idea of personal awareness or the personal I am, is talking about this big I am and this big consciousness, which when you really go into it, it isn't consciousness and it isn't I am, it is unknowable, it's just a happening. It's like, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. When you have something like concussion, I think I said this last time, if you act a little bit quirky, you like you think think that everybody's like um looking at you like she's dying, she's dying, and you're suddenly gonna get a flood of their negative energy about like how ill you are or something, or how you shouldn't or shouldn't should or shouldn't be doing this. So there's always like a consciousness be- I'm always a bit loopy, but when having confess that I'm ill, then everyone's like, she's acting loopy. Let's put her back in the hospital.
so the question always comes back to, or the no question, whatever extremity you want to go to, is who is it that's looking out of the eyes? Who is it that was born? Who is it that's alive? Who is it that you fear will die? Who? Who looks out? And what might be seen but by nobody because there's no one that could possibly see it. That would be an abstraction of the mind. But it can there can be a seeing or a knowing or a shift that there is nothing that's experiencing. There is not a thing, not a position, not a location that's experiencing. Which is everything. There's nothing that's looking out of your eyes. Who is it that you think is looking out of your eyes? Who is it that you think was born? And you'll see, or there will be a seeing, that it was all stories. That all of that were stories. If you were, you dreamt yourself. You dreamt your loneliness. You dreamt your personhood. You dreamt your relationships. In this moment, right here, right now, we can go into the story and we can talk about that at another time. But in this moment, there is no relationship. There is no story. There is just experiencing and that experiencing is unknowable. It's not subject object. Again, that's another abstraction of the mind. I'm sitting here looking at Lisa. Where? Who? Your mind thinks that my eyes are looking at Lisa. My he ears are hearing Lisa. Lisa's mouth is speaking, but that's your thought. That's a story. That's a story that's gone. And then here we are, this perfect, brilliant aliveness that is. That's alive, awake, that's experiencing. And it's so beautiful and profound. And then the story comes up and goes, but I don't feel good, or I want more. And that's fair enough, but notice it to be what it is, a story. And yes, it's appropriate for the story to want more, or the person to want more at times, but it's not what you're actually looking for. That's pleasure and pain. So you get a hit of pleasure, and then a hit of pain. What is it that's beyond that? 